Broadcasting 7 Women Sports here on KQET. I'm your host, Terry Erickson. Each week, an inside look into sports, wellness, and fitness. Well, this week, a father-daughter combination. The spotlight shines bright on the Aquinas Blue Goals. My guests this week, Coach Dave Donarski and daughter Lexi. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Well, we know, everyone knows it's documented, the skill set of Lexi Donarski. I mean, there's no question about it. Um, I know a little bit more because I know uh, your mom pretty well. I know how gifted she was as a high school athlete at, at Onalaska. I know how gifted she was at Cardinal Stridge. So, but since she's not the coach by default, <laughs> your dad, head coach Dave Donarski, is with us today. What do you think of that? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> you could have done better. Yeah, right. I, yeah. So a little, just a little fun sarcasm to start the show. And just Pam's, to, yeah. Just to get your attention. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, Pam Bash, the mom, what an athlete she was. Hey, as we tape the show here on June 17th, a lot, of, a lot of people say, I've read articles, the world is a mess. I sort of agree with that. The world is a mess with uh, racial issues, uh, social justice, uh, coronavirus, I mean, we're, we're living in unprecedented times. For young people, unprecedented times, obviously. Um, a lot of people ask this question, do we have a little bit of racial injustice? Do we have racial problems in the greater La Crosse area? Since this, it's been the last several decades, the demographics of this area has changed dramatically. What's your thought on that as a young person, Lexi? Yeah, I think there are racial issues in the area. I think it's worse in bigger cities than La Crosse, but they definitely are present here. Uh, somebody said to me the other day that, you know, Terry, there are some racial issues that need to be addressed in the schools, at the universities, but a lot of it's silent and subtle. What's your thought on that, Dave? Yeah, I can see that because you don't you don't see the rioting that you're seeing in the larger cities. But you know, we had recent protests and things like that. And I think the there are things that need to come out of this that uh, that changes need to be made. And uh, I feel like La Crosse is a great community, and they'll be proactive in making those changes. And ideally, that happens across our nation. I hope so too. Yeah. Well, COVID nineteen cases seem to be on the rise, and it just seems like. Uh, this is not a lesson, by the way, in, in maybe changing lifestyles. However, um, they're on the rise, and in La Crosse, again, as we take the show here on June 17th, they seem to be on the rise in the La Crosse area, and particularly for young people. And I don't know if young people think they're immune to it and so on, but COVID-19 uh, is a real issue, and it impacted you, Lexi, such a great deal because as as our viewers know, you you finished your semifinal game. You're ready to play Melos Mandora the third time in a row. All of that ends abruptly, and and then your entire spring season, um, your track and field, your your spring banquets, all of it uh, evaporated. Emotional, to say the least. Yeah, it was definitely challenging. We had a lot of high expectations for everything that was coming in the future, from basketball to all of those other games, and then track, too. I was really looking forward to all of it, especially with it being my senior year. It was just really hard to have that all gone. Emotional. Now, those people that maybe never experienced anything like that as an athlete or as a parent, they maybe don't quite get it. But, you know, you were fortunate to be a student athlete. I was. And now I see our grandson too, uh, being all of that being taken away. That's hard on parents too. It is. I think though, if you look at all the great experiences we had prior to the pandemic, it's really hard to complain, right? She had a chance to win a couple back-to-back -back state titles. Uh, she did get, you know, with uh, some great teams, and then. Uh, played some AAU basketball, got noticed at a national level, and you know, you can't take those accolades away. Yeah, I wish she could have played them too, just for her sake, but I feel like she was really resilient, and you know what she did? She practiced, like that's all we've been doing since uh, they closed up all the gyms. You know, we, we have workouts daily for the last, what, six, six out of seven days for the last three and a half months. So she put her mind in the right place, like I just need to keep getting better. So I'm super proud of the way she's kind of handled that. 
Again, our guests this week, Dave and Lexi Donarski, young people watching the show this week, that's a lesson in itself. Instead of, you know, feeling sorry, maybe taking your time away from discipline, routine, and, and practice, and so on, stay with it. Uh, and if you haven't, now's the time to pick up on that. You know, there's a lot of articles, too, on, on the change in professional and, uh, and college sports. And... Um, and perhaps trickling down to high school in terms of culture building, in terms of racial issues, in terms of, of, of athletes not necessarily choosing a, a school based on success, which Iowa State has had. I think you were, they were 18 and 11 last year. Their season um, changed or, uh, ended abruptly. But um, colleges are changing, and students want to go to a college, to a university that the coach will listen to them. That it's it's uh, it, that students are athletes are empowered. Uh, they're part of culture building. What's your thought on that? I think that Coach Fenley has done a really good job promoting the whole family atmosphere at Iowa State, and I think that that's why he chooses the players that he recruits because he wants the players that want to be a part of that family. So that's something that I'm really looking forward to because the whole coaching staff has really done a good job of that. Good, good, because that then then the cutting edge. I mean, you so at Iowa State they've done that even before these sort of changes that are on the horizon. Good to hear. You know, your thoughts on coaching, too. Um, before we get into specifics of uh, Aquinas and so on, your thoughts on coaching, because you've always used the coaching platform uh, to uh, uh, embody and, uh, and, and share excellence and so on. There's, you've had high expectations for your athletes. You've taught a lot of life lessons. But I, authors talk about high school coaching having to sort of change their approach, too and maybe emphasize more of social justice and things like that. What's your thought on that? I don't necessarily think it's a bad idea. You know, we try to incorporate a lot, like, from a faith perspective. So we have our own um, mini fellowship of Christian athletes that we conduct with our team. And, uh, and I think that really helps, you know, when you talk about not only building a successful culture, but building successful people and how they are wired maybe and how they understand other people's needs and they put them in front of themselves and I feel like that's been a big part of why we've had the success that we've had along with you know great players obviously and uh, and I feel like we'll continue to do that um, if there are pieces that need to be you know addressed relative to, to racial injustice or that type of thing I'm sure we're, we're more than happy to kind of move down that path as well well I'm sure it the mission statement of Aquinas is a Christ-centered institution that promotes spiritual values and so on. And that's something that Coach Donarski talks about, and I'm sure you practice too, Alexi. Yeah, it's that's always been a focus of ours at Aquinas, just to the way that we represent ourselves is super important, and all of our coaching staff really emphasizes that. And they work all the time with us, not only to become better players, but to become better people too. Ted Knutson, the president of Aquinas Schools and close friend of mine said, Lexi Donarski represented not only uh, skills as a player, but uh, she personified what an Aquinas Blue Gold uh, Christian student athlete should be. Thought? Yeah, that's, that's an honor just to be hearing that. And it's something that the coaching staff has worked with all of us on. and. It's definitely a focus of all of us athletes. We want to represent ourselves and our school and our team in the best way that we possibly can. There was an article in the paper not too long ago that said, uh, talked about you and uh, your humble beginnings and it reminded me of uh, Tim McGraw, one of my favorite singers who has a very, uh, one of his signature songs is always stay humble and kind. Did you know that? <laughs> that's not that's not her genre, right? Yeah, that's not her music. Yeah, <laughs> that reminded me of that. But you started uh, playing basketball when you were four years old, and my question was, why did you wait so long? <laughs> hey, I had I have baby pictures holding basketballs. Like I've had a ball in my hand since pretty much the day I was born. <laughs> and we just started doing some pictures, getting ready for her graduation party, and she's like, oh my God, you guys have been brainwashing me since I was out of the womb, and it's the truth. Yeah, it's, it's, been, a, it's been a fun experience for us as parents to watch that too. Four years old. Last game you played, uh, the semifinals over Crandon. Um, 
And of course, you had no idea that that was the end. You scored 21 points. You you, you did well, of course. Uh, but let's go back quickly and talk, and think share with our viewers the emotions you had as that your entire career ended. Going into the game and after the game, like right after the game when we had the press box interviews and all of that, we had no clue that we weren't going to be playing Saturday. We figured that since we were able to play our semi-final game that we would definitely be able to play Saturday too. So it wasn't like, we didn't find out until maybe 11 that night after the game that they had canceled the rest of the state tournament. So at first it was all just excitement with our team. We were getting ready to play in our final game. We had our last day of practice and all of that. So it was a couple hours later when we finally got the news and we knew that our season was over. I'm sure emotionally from the standpoint of uh, you and your great coaching staff, by the way, that's I think that's one of the keys to your success, no question about it. But before we take a commercial break, you uh, obviously, not just because you had Alexi and Macy, but knowing that you're on the threshold of uh, another state championship, which would have been three, three yeah. uh, in your six year tenure, um, Everything, everything just crumbled. Yeah, you felt at first like that emotion of being cheated a little bit out of that experience. But again, I go back to as you get a ch little chance to reflect, like we've had so many incredible opportunities over the last, you know, four years. So not getting to finish it hurts, it still hurts today. But, uh, but knowing that we had some opportunities and, and, and did capitalize on those, it helps soften the blow a little but bit. But it must leave a little emptiness there, though. More than a little, yeah. So I yeah. Thought. And emptiness, yeah. too, and we're going we're to come back and talk to you about uh, other sports, but certainly emptiness would be the word I would choose with not having a senior track and field season. Yeah, it was, was emptiness. it was really hard, especially right after basketball, too, because like, they were still questioning on doing a short season, just starting later depending on how everything with the virus went but yeah yeah it was it was hard with all that happening all back to back yeah. all right well we're gonna step aside just for a minute when we come back more here on seven river sports with our busy lives it's a comfort to know that we can still remember loved ones in a traditional way with a monument lewiston monuments in lewiston minnesota has been helping families purchase a monument for over four generations You'll find a large selection of beautiful granite, marble, and bronze monuments, all at competitive prices. And they're a full-service company, so they also do straightening, cleaning, and repair of monuments. Stop in or call for a no-obligation consultation, or visit lewistonmonument.com for more information. You know, the thing I'm most proud of when I think about our company is the reputation that we've been able to build in this community. Our technicians have done a great job going out and performing magnificent jobs for the customer. And our customers have rewarded us with some really great reviews online. We have over 150 five-star reviews online right now. Our technicians do a great job out there and our reviews show it. We can say without hesitation, when you choose Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, you'll be glad you did. Welcome back to Seven River Sports. Great interview today and this week with Dave and Lexi Dinarski. We talked before we went on break about the spring season being cut short for Lexi. Three sport athlete, volleyball, uh, all kinds of honors in volleyball, surpassed a thousand kills, thousand digs, all conference, player of the year, and so on, track and field. Uh, part of a team that won the state championship last year, but also uh, record setting in a variety of uh, events 100, 200, high jump. I think you have the school record there. So, um, all of that, you have to reflect back on your junior year and take that uh, into the next chapter of your life. But you could have accomplished a great deal more as an athlete and perhaps as a team. Yeah, it was nice that we were able to end my junior season in that way, like by winning a state championship in track, a team state championship, which is hard to do because it's such an individual sport but it was really fun to be able to share that with all my teammates and now we're just looking forward to things to come in the future. There's, there's different views on um, student athletes being uh, involved in multiple sports, which I endorse, uh, which I, I was fortunate enough, fortunate enough to be a multi-sport 
as athlete as well as our grandchildren played, uh, and our children, I mean, played all three sports in high school, our five children. You personify um, excellence, but also uh, diversifying and playing in multiple sports, and I think uh, you've endorsed that, Dave. Yeah, in a big way. I, you know, I feel like it keeps athletes fresh mentally and physically. Um, truth be told, we, uh, we spent time with basketball throughout the entire 12-month period, but we love that she was a volleyball player, and I feel like you, know, you play different roles on different teams, so she's a hitter and needs um, people to assist her to get to that oppor you know, those opportunities. She learns to be that type of player, and then in track, she's got to be a great teammate, and she's got to help motivate some of those younger kids or build their confidence. Like Every different sport had a different role for her to play, and I think that's important because that's what life will be. You don't know what your job will be and who you're going to report to and what you're going to need to do from that side of it and I think it's a great life teacher. It certainly is and of course if I asked you what your favorite sport was I think it, I think all of our viewers would know the answer to that. I hope so. Basketball. Yeah. Not just because <laughs> the, basket, the head coach is sitting next to you. But basketball but you personified also what going above and beyond as it talks about in the book of Proverbs about going to, this, to the next level of paying the price that a lot of athletes maybe are not willing to do into the off season. Yeah, during volleyball season, I obviously focus on volleyball, but I was still working out almost every day after practice and stuff. And then during track season was AAU, so I was always in basketball season pretty much, but I also did play club volleyball every year until mm -hmm. my senior year during basketball season, so I was always playing two sports at once. Put your academic hat on a minute, though, because academics, as we know, um, and you even multi-sport athlete, academics comes first. I'm sure your parents said that. Maybe not. Well, it right, depends. right after basketball. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. See, she listened. She that's, listened. That's, that's great. That's, that's just a little bit of humor uh, because you stood out in the classroom also and you're in leadership groups, impact. I'm familiar with that being a Christ-centered service mm -hmm. group. Um, and uh, National Honor Society, uh, which I don't think Dave, your dad was involved in. <laughs> no. <laughs> and interact, but so you've, uh, you, you, you really uh, uh, took every opportunity to be a complete student. Yeah, I love volunteering in the community. It's a lot of fun to be able to help people that are less fortunate or that don't have as much as us. So it's a lot of fun for me and a group of my friends to put ourselves out there and do think, do some things that we can to help. So you're on a platform as a student athlete. You know that. People are watching you. And it just comes with the territory. So being able to recognize that other people maybe don't have the skills you have um, or the opportunities you have, that's an important life lesson. Yeah, it's, it's fun to be able to get together with people outside of sports too because it can be so competitive it's nice to be able to relax too that's part of uh the mission of a coach it is yeah no question about it. i mean you can know all the strategy but if life lessons are absent from uh your uh, playbook mm -hmm. i'm not sure that coaches are doing what they're what they should be as a coach i would agree um and i don't know how to phrase this without coming across the wrong way but i think success helps teach lessons at a higher level too so we've been fortunate to to be a successful program which resonates more when you say something to a, a student athlete about how this is going to reflect in their lives because you have that credibility so we've been really really blessed with that and Lexi I mean I think about her high school career and think what more could she have done like she was able to kind of get through all of that and, and have success in three different levels and build relationships with kids and uh, and ideally be the right kind of role model. She should be, like, she should give back. I want to go in a different direction just for a minute. We have a lot more things to talk about, so stay with us, please. Challenges of coaching your daughter. I coached our daughter. I coached one of my sons. I uh, talked to coaches that have uh, Dick Bennett coaching Tony Bennett, uh, Kevin Kravick coaching his son at Bangor. Oh my goodness. You have all kinds of stories. Uh, can I treat that uh, player the same at home? Um, expect no more, no less. Uh, ask coaches for their unbiased feedback on whether you're too hard on them. Um, preparing, uh, uh, pre preparing for peer pressure. 
pretty complex. It's complex. Um, she's the toughest kid I've ever coached, like mentally. So I give her a ton of credit. Um, either we were going to have the greatest relationship ever or we were going to be in counseling for the rest of her life because I was extremely difficult on her because I knew that she had a special level that she could get to. And when it wasn't coming out the way I wanted it to, I was really tough on her. So there's some stories that we couldn't repeat here that are not very becoming of me. But I'll admit she came through that really tough. I feel like our relationship, I hope she feels the same way, is fantastic. and. Uh, and I think she finally got to where I thought she was capable of being, and I still think there's more there. So, but it is a challenge. It's a big challenge. I imagine yeah. there were some times where it was pretty uh, volatile. But how, did Mom get involved in any of that? Always. Yep. Yeah. She's actually tougher maybe than than I am. She's on not four scared to say whatever's on her mind. <laughs> yeah. No, she's I pretty think open. I already know that. Yeah, she's way. pretty open, and yeah. you can hear her voice in the crowd because that's my Out of right? anyone else. So she'll be, Her and, voice then, carries. and then Lexi will repeat what she said during the game, like mom said this, and it's like it's a crowded gym and it's really electric and yet mom's voice rises above. So in she's case, got that going for her. In case you wonder, in case any of our viewers wonder, in case uh, Pam wonders, referees can hear it too. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sure that's true. Yeah, they know her as well as we do. Yeah, that exactly voice. That's exactly right. Yeah. But uh, let's go back to Lexi a minute. So you're on your way to uh, Iowa State, leaving pretty quick. Business degree, you got to go to class, you know, even though you're. Class has started uh, Monday. Okay. Yeah. Virtual. Yep, online. And uh, so you're on your way. And what, do you, are, are there any, like, Thoughts you have, or any uh, any any ad, uh, adversity you feel coming, any homesickness, anything is like, oh my goodness, what am I getting myself into? Um, I think that I'm prepared to go now. It's it's been a lot of fun, but I'm ready for the next step now. Okay. So you, you know, doesn't look like she's going to be homesick by that. She's ready to get out. <laughs> Thanks, so. Lex. Appreciate so, that. Uh, you know, all, all of us have had people that inspired uh, us when we were younger and all the way through our life. Who's inspired you? I've had a lot of great basketball players to be able to look up to in this area, like Scott Christopherson when I was younger, and then Bronson Koenig and Matt Thomas. They were all people that have succeeded at really high levels and definitely people that I've looked up to. Would you call them team players too? Yeah. Dave, um, as a coach, people have inspired me, inspired you, your thoughts, your methods, your strategy, and so on. Who's inspired you? Uh, Rick Schneider, I think, uh, even though we're the same age, essentially. Um, he did some things when we were with the guys program that helped me become a much better coach. So I would say he's definitely on the list. And, and actually Pam's coach, uh, Rich Pinella, who passed away a while back, uh, he was just a fantastic mentor to those kids and he really understood relationship building. And I feel like I took some of what he did and brought that to here. Actually, I worked games for him. Did you? Yeah. Pam played and I knew him quite well. I knew he had that uh, debilitating disease. And yeah, ALS, yeah. ALS and so on. Well. Um, Six years at Aquinas, uh, four straight trips to state, uh, a lot of this is documented, 147 wins, 14 losses, 71 and 7 uh, in the MVC, six MVC championships. Like, what did you, would, would you have ever thought that your success would be that sort of resounding? I don't know that I thought it would be resounding, but certainly as a coach, like you have high expectations. As I do as Lexi leaves, I feel like, the, and, and her senior class, who's, I mean, they were 107 and 3, that group. So I look a lot smarter because they were really good. But I have the same expectations as we go into next year, and uh, hopefully we can kind of continue to build our culture. I'm sure you will. Yeah. Rapid fire drill, you ready? Favorite opponent? Oh, that's hard. Um, individual? I would, there are a couple key players you played against? You yeah, played I would against? say Paige Beckers, just because she's such an amazing player. It's We talk quite a bit, too, and so it's a lot of fun to be able to play against her. Defining moments in your entire four-year career? Being able to share two state championships with the best team of girls and coaches that what I could have asked for. What does leadership mean to you? Leadership is being able to represent yourself in your school and in the best way possible and encouraging others to do the same. What, what's something that our viewers would say, I didn't know that about Lexi Donarski? I have probably done 
every sport or activity that you could think of as a kid. And, and I think when you were younger, I remember this actually from your mom, you, you were a dancer. I danced through like middle school, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Now I've heard, uh, I've seen your dad dance and obviously that's not where you got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she didn't really get any skills from me now that we talk about it, yeah. Biggest disappointment in your entire career? Um, just everything being canceled yes. from state to the McDonald's All-American game to the Jordan game and then the whole spring season. Philosophy of life. Hmm. Well, it must be something about working hard. Yeah, definitely that hard work pays off. You always have to give everything your, your best. It's funny, your favorite saying in the profile that I read is very similar to mine because it's in the book of uh, Philippians. Yeah, um, I just think that looking into your faith life can help bring things out. So I can Christ do can do things. all things through. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And has He strengthened you? Definitely. Has there ever been a doubt where you're not you're not as strong as you wanted to be? Um, obviously, there's things that can like question that, but no. No, I, you've had tremendous success, and it's a privilege to know you, know your mom and dad, have you on the show. It's a, uh, it's a gift for, and one of the greatest things about my opportunity as a host of a show is to get, get to meet people like uh, Dave Donarski and Lexi Donarski. So we, uh, we want to thank you for being on the show this week. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for having us. And also uh, great success into the future. And I'm sure uh, both of you will uh, take that and the rest of your life will be as successful as what we've seen so far. Thank you. Thank you. So, all right. Well, we'll be right back with some closing thoughts after this. You know, the thing I'm most proud of when I think about our company is the reputation that we've been able to build in this community. Our technicians have done a great job going out and performing magnificent jobs for the customer. And our customers have rewarded us with some really great reviews online. We have over 150 five-star reviews online right now. Our technicians do a great job out there and our reviews show it. We can say without hesitation, when you choose Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, you'll be glad you did. When you're faced with the decision of selecting a monument to honor someone dear to you, call Lewiston Monuments for a no-obligation consultation. Lewiston Monument is a full-service monument company, serving families in Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin for over four generations. You'll find beautiful granite, marble, and bronze memorials all at competitive prices. Their experts can help you design the perfect and unique memorial. Lewiston Monument. Call today or on the web at lewistonmonument.com. Whitcraft and Enya Samansky, Logan High School student athletes, as we discuss their career as a Logan track and field athlete. You won't want to miss that show. Well, that's it this week here on Seven River Sports. I'm your host, Terry Erickson. Hoping you're staying safe and healthy. And like me, hoping you get your life back to normal in the weeks and months ahead.